So we want to sort of open the floor with these speakers and uh, give them a, a, a chance to follow up on these talks and um, react to some other angles and nuances maybe that we, that we didn't, didn't hear directly in the, in the talk. But uh, Dr. John, can you, um, without giving away too much of your thunder, for well, I don't have a lot of thunder to start with. You don't? <laughs> How much are you going to take? Well, what, what, are you, what, what are we going to hear when you speak to us this afternoon in terms of electricity, well, electromagnetism, and the Bible? Most of the time I operate in the Bible. So that's, that's where I'm going to go. And um, it's, uh, it's amazing when you start digging into Scripture um, how much you find about the divine power of God is expressed in the storm. I think if you know anything about ethnology, ancient religions, and I'm sure Grant covered some of this, Baal was the god of the storm, the Canaanite god. The Philistine god, Dagon, was supposed to be his father, was the god of the storm. But it was it was God who subdued both of them and showed his power in the storm. Um, pagan religion is filled with the, the notion that whoever the main god is controls the storm for two reasons. One, because you can kill with it and because you can give life with it. And if you can do both in one thing, you're, you're in charge. So in Scripture, God showed that he could subdue the false storm gods. He did it several different ways. So we'll look at a couple of those. And then we'll hear a speech from a 30-year-old pal of Job who had some serious insights into the storm. Fantastic. Thank you very much. While we're speaking of storms, uh, Dr. Lyle talked about storms on other planets. So, Dr. Lyle, are, are the, the, from a standpoint of physical forces and especially electricity, electromagnetism, are storms on other planets caused by the same f forces that cause storms on the Earth? Uh, yeah, the, the, they're similar. With uh, Jupiter's red spot, for example, it's, uh, one difference is it's a high pressure system, whereas hurricanes on the Earth are low pressure systems, so there's that difference. But the other thing is the red spot seems to be more or less permanent. Uh, hurricanes on, on the Earth, they're powered by heat from the ocean. After a hurricane goes by, the ocean's temperature is 10 degrees cooler, actually. So they're powered by that heat, but then they go over land and they get cut off from their power source and they kind of peter out. Whereas with Jupiter, there's no land. And so the storms tend to go for a very long time on Jupiter. The, the great red spot, we, it's been around for at least 300 years since we've had telescopes powerful enough to be able to see it. So that's, that's one difference is the, uh, the uh, uh, persistence of some of these storms. We found that Neptune also develops dark spots on it that are cyclone, and they're, they're low pressure systems, just like hurricanes on the Earth. And they come and go, but we don't, we don't know if, I mean, they could, it could be that they're permanent too. It's just the color changes. If, it, if it's not black, you don't see it anymore. If it blends in with the planet, you can't see it. Right. So, but we know that there's a dark spot on Neptune that you, sometimes it's in the southern hemisphere and sometimes there's one in the northern hemisphere. Hubble has been able to detect that. So there are, there are storms on, on, the, uh, on the big planets anyway. Mars doesn't really have enough of an atmosphere to have much of a storm. You can get dust storms. Where the, and, and it obscures the planet's features. And if you're looking at it in a small telescope, it's very disappointing when that happens because it, it, it's a global scale uh, dust storms. But they're, it's not in terms of lightning or things like that. But the, it just obscures the entire face of the planet. And you're like, well, I can't believe I got up for that. So, uh, <laughs> All right, so yeah. electromagnetic fields and interactions with the sun, I mean, are th they're part of those storms, right? Well, yeah, the sun, this, the electromagnetic radiation from the sun, the heat and light that comes from it is, and, and, and combined with the rotation of a planet is what drives all weather, basically. Uh, the systems are chaotic, which means a very small change in initial conditions results in enormous change in outcome, which is why we will never be able to predict the weather more than about two weeks in advance. Uh, interesting. Dr. Horner, do you, do you agree with what Dr. MacArthur said about the, the ancient gods being associated with the storm and whoever controls the storm is the top dog? Yeah, he's my boss. I concur. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, so, sounds about right. 